Hello and welcome to Juicy Scoop. Well, I've got a real juicy guest here. Comedian, author, actor, uh, screenwriter, movie producer, sure. what else? Monkey. It is Chris Monkey. Catan. <laughs> well, one of your best characters. That's true. Mr. Peepers. Mr. Sure. Peepers. We um, have known each other for many years, we but have. we recently just did this show called Punchline that I've talked mm -hmm. about. It's on every night. Check your local listings on the Fox regular network. Um, and it's like comedians come on and we, so we spent the whole day, we did like four episodes or three episodes That's coming yeah, up with these. Three, I think. And it's like, it's like a real workout for the comedians because they give you these, all these topics. And so if you're doing three shows in a day, then you come up with the jokes right there. Right. And so it's like, Real, it was like a, yeah. it was like a lab writing session at the ground. Yeah, it's good to see. I mean, I don't want to. Can we give away with the show? Like, not give it away, but we'll say that. Chris, <laughs> you've had an extraordinary life, and you just wrote uh, this book, "Baby Don't Hurt Me" by Chris Kattan. It's such a great cover. You're in a tux. You look cute, and you have you. Um, four monkeys. Yeah. On you. Five. Oh, it's where's five. the fifth? Just one on the corner. They're on the side of the book. One, it two, three, four. Oh, on the side yeah, of Yeah, see. Um, <laughs> now, one thing I found interesting about you, because we met at the Groundlings Theater, which I talk a lot about That's the Groundlings right. on this show, so people know it's a sketch improv comedy troupe on Melrose. It's been around for, I don't know, 50 years or 40 years so or something. 75, I think. I think okay, 75. so like 40 years. Um, I remember, so you were ahead of me. You were already in the Sunday show when I started. So already, like, ooh, so that I was person in, was already happening. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. I'll, not, no, I'll, but that's what I was saying. But I remember what was interesting is in my group of everybody, everybody was kind of like my age, but but everyone had already gone to college and finished college. And I remember someone saying, Chris Catan is like the first alumni, you know, his dad was an original wow. Groundlings, and you right. were like the first child to now go through the program. Second and generation. you went second generation and you did not go to college you went straight from high school to the ground no, I did some college though no, oh, okay. I was in, I was in... but still you were unusually kind of young for yes, the group. True. yes yeah I like was... most of us I would say the average age of people kind of starting it was like mid 20s mm -hmm. and even sometimes later like we had people in our Sunday show that were like late 30s early 40s mm -hmm. because it was really like what I loved about it is there was no really formula for it because it's comedy so like as long as you're funny, it didn't matter. There right. wasn't like ageism to it. You could be really young, mm -hmm. as long as you're over 18, or you could be, you know, in advertising and really want to be a comic, and you right. went through, the, you could go through the whole program, yeah. basically, and still keep a regular job, which yeah. was really kind of yeah. cool about it. It was cool. I mean, you had to pay, obviously, for classes right. and stuff. And I think I was, I think I was a 19 when I started, and Mindy Sterling was my teacher. She told me to hold back, like she wanted to move me on up uh -huh. from intermediate to, uh, no, it was uh, whatever. It goes what, what basic, basic, intermediate, intermediate lab, lab. And okay. lab you have like the little show at the end, like a little, right, right. A little like uh, recital mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> type of thing. Recital. And then the next group is advanced where you have two six week programs with a show at the end right and then you get into sunday yeah 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 which is then every show you do a sunday you do a show every sunday night for six months and right. then they keep voting on you yeah and um i think mindy held me back one year because i was too young she held me back but she but she said i like, want to move you up but like you're too young like just so like wait. you would with like a kindergartner like that like well, if i was like, like yeah <laughs> i guess yeah if i was a kindergartner in like you're school. smart enough to do the math but we think That's you're right. a little immature we yeah it's a little, a little bit young. like uh yeah were in those 80s movies where you're too smart. Yeah. Like war games or something, I guess. Right, Maybe yeah. not. I so was that, too advanced. So did that bum you out? That yeah, you I was a little bummed on? out. Yeah. But I actually went to Russia that year off because I was waiting to continue with the Groundlings because I had no other passion but to <laughs> yeah. do the Groundlings. And um, I went to the Soviet Union and um, I met a girl there. Wait, oh, just oh, on your oh, own, did, like, for oh, wait, fun? Wait, wait, wait. Well, no, in high school, we did this, this, it's in the book, My Baby Don't Hurt Me book, and there... Uh, there's a point in high school where we put together some children's play called Lullaby for Tomorrow. I don't know what was going on. Anyway, it was um, we went over to the Soviet Union, Novosibirsk, Siberia. We put on a play in Novosibirsk, Siberia, and I fell in love there. Wait, stop. What? You wrote a play in high school. I didn't write it. Okay. I was in a play so you during cast high school. That then got a order to go perform in Siberia in Russia. Yes, yeah. But it was like someone had a relationship with somebody in Russia. 
there was like a, you know, but you're speaking like a, English. Well, yes, we were, but we didn't speak much because it was like for kids. It was a kids' place. Oh, it was a kids' place. Like so I the played Russian, Pinocchio and some played So Wonder the Russian Woman. kids would come, and how long were you in Russia for? For about four months, three, four months. What was the weather like? <laughs> I'm just your curious. First question? I don't know, isn't it always cold? What was cold? the weather like? Well, to like a California I love kid. it. Like, that's information. You can get that information anywhere. Why go well, anywhere? But what was well, it? Japan. You went to Japan. What was the weather like? Was it cold? <laughs> that's all you care about? No, it's what not What was it like to be in about? space? I want to understand what it was like. You in space? You are, you're was going it cold? To... <laughs> I never want to go to space, by the way. Ever. You don't want to go no, to space. No, I just went to Disneyland. You and... probably don't want to go to space because you can't bring all your things. I'm just freaked out about getting lost in space. Oh, I don't well, you have other friends with you Even when I go on, you. like, Space Mountain or I just went to that's Disneyland. A, that's a ride. Wait a Star second. Wars, nothing to do with space. I don't space. want to go to space. I don't want to see But that's not see a, like, that's like saying I'm going to uh, go see a Last Jedi and you feel like you're going to space I'm and you can't saying, see the movie. I'm just saying, like, if the like world is ending, I just, I want to go with it. I don't want to go oh, okay, to another land. That. I don't want to go out but on a spaceship. But usually that's not an option. That's not usually happening. It's not like... Well, get ready. Any moment, we might have to go you, to space, you guys. Just that, remember that Sandra Bullock movie? <laughs> There's not going to be a lot of room on that shuttle anyway. Remember the Sandra Bullock movie where she was an astronaut? Oh, yeah, Gravity. And then she got, like, separated from George Clooney. George Clooney, I know. And that's, then that's she was lost. Right. And that yeah. is the scariest movie I've ever had in my that's life. That's because you associate George Clooney as, a, no, as like, something you were doing. No, it was lose. like that she wasn't going to be able to go back, and then finally she sees that she's getting close to the earth, and then she like ends up in that swamp in New Orleans or whatever, and I was like, oh, thank God. She ended up in a swamp in New Orleans? No, she ends up in some water. <laughs> and it's like, That was not a swamp in New Orleans. I love, like, you don't remember. Anyway, I don't ever want to go to you space. You ever in the wind? Can we go back to the Russian thing? <laughs> <laughs> did were you did you have to wrap up yourself every day in like a lot of clothing? Uh, no, it was in summer. It was in the That's summer. That's my question. It was Siberia, and yeah, that is known to be a very cold place. No, okay. no, well, I was having fun with you. Okay, so you fell fall in love with from. your co-star. Uh, I guess so. Yeah, we fell in love, and then she, then it was like, and these were the days there was no Instagram, there right. was no texting. You right. know, it was like. We had to save up money for a phone call. Right. You know? It was like, or, or even a, a wire. Yeah. We would wire each other, you know, that was like 50 bucks or something. Because you know? the girl lived in Russia. She lived in Russia. Oh, okay. So then I uh, invited her over, on, you know, on a uh, temporary visa, you know. Oh, like a 90 day fiance kind of situation. Yeah. Okay. Right. Good. But I was already in love with her. It wasn't like order yeah. by thing. Right. You know, yeah. I knew the person. Yeah. And uh, so she came over and we built a relationship. How long did she stay no, here for? She's a couple of years. She still lives here. She married somebody else. Oh. But uh, that's okay. It was. It was did like. You keep uh, in touch with her. Uh, a little bit. I mean, not too much. She she married a good friend of mine, and oh. they live in New York. And well, uh, wait a minute. Well, I fell, we fell out of love, but it was like we were such good friends that. Um, when you were in love, did she meet, meet your friend that she ended up marrying? No, we were uh, kind of fell out of love. It was. I kind of knew that I had to. Um, I don't know. I was young. I had to. I had to go. I, I. I just wanted to focus on getting to New York and going on SNL. I was so about. So that. when? When was your goal? Like how old? And were I wasn't you? ready to have a family yet. So did you have like a childhood goal of SNL? That's it. Like a very yeah. specific. Mm -hmm. And when did that first come to you? Oh, uh, probably when I was eighteen. Oh, that before. okay. Yeah. Because I remember maybe seven. One summer, my dad. We, for some reason, we, we had an extra TV. Yeah. And I shared a room with my sister. Right. And so one summer, my dad goes, okay, I'll let you guys have this extra TV in your room. Right. And every night on some channel, they played old SNLs mm -hmm, for mm -hmm. the summer. And every night, my sister and I would stay up and watch it. Right. And I remember watching it and being like, oh, my God, I'd like to do this, but... It looks scary that they're just standing by a subway. You know, right. like their opening things were always like them out at night. And I and you mean I, the sketches? No, like their opening credits of like it's oh. Chris Catan. Oh, and like I see what they always show you guys like, you know, on a subway or, you know, in New York. And for some reason That's I was right. always I like Jimmy's the one on the subway, I think, if which, it. Yeah, but throughout but, the years, sure, throughout yeah. all the cast members. Yeah. When it was because we were watching all the reruns. So we were watching right. like Gilda oh, Radner oh, and okay, everything. everything yeah. They're filling them up. And um and I was like, oh, I, there's something scary about, like, New York and being by myself. Like, it's right. just so different than saying. California. Yeah, it is. So I was always kind of like, oh. But I loved, like, the sketches and, you know, all that kind of stuff. But I always, I always knew I wanted to be 
you know, in entertainment, but I didn't specifically go, it's, you know, it's, it's doing characters in SNL and all that. It kind of mm-hmm. like ended up going, oh, this is the thing I kind of shine at. I should focus on right. that. But for you, you like, you knew this was your jam. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I did. And that's what I focused on when I was on the, in the Groundlings, you know, creating characters and, and with learning your, how to write. What was your childhood like? Were you, I know that you had a really fucking funny joke on the punchline. I did. <laughs> your parents yeah. being divorced. And it was like the then, top. The topic of was something about. Oh yeah. Um, I don't remember. And what my it was. parents' vows. They were getting yeah. together forever. Oh, so. you remember that? Yeah, yeah that something like like yeah. it was like. like oh, what? Yeah. Oh, they lied. There was like because the, the joke was they do these studies and the study is, you know, how much parents lie to their kids. What's the biggest lie that you were told as a kid? And your right. joke was that my parents. Were they, well, that my parents said they, promised to be in, yeah, married forever. To, to so, be yeah. together forever. Yeah. yeah. Like Whatever till death do us part. Well, death to his it? part. Yes, yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. That that my parents said till death do us part. That's right. So how old were you when your Thank parents? Thank you for remembering that. Yeah. Did you watch the show? Yeah. <laughs> That's nice. How old were you when your parents um, died? I'm not died. Sorry, died. broke up. <laughs> Sorry. It's, that's the, this is a serious podcast. That should have been the first question. So yeah. welcome to the show. <laughs> when did your parents die? Let's just kick it off with a big one. Yes. <laughs> Uh, no, they they divorced when I was like two years old. Oh, very young. Yeah, very young. And um, I was living in Sherman Oaks at the time. That's where my mom and dad were. My mom uh, left my dad and, and for another man named Mark, who was a, became my stepdad, and he was a Buddhist monk. And I, uh, you know, lived in a lived up in a place called Mount Baldy, which is do you know where Mount Baldy is? It's kind of like on the way to Big Bear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Basically, like uh-huh. yeah, it's on the way to Big Bear. There's not much to do up there, but there's a Zen community up there, community, actually. And, um, you know, my stepdad and my mom were very involved in that. So, wait, you grew up in a commune? A community, I would say. Commune's more harsh. But a, commu- a Zen community. Did you like, eat? there's a Zen center. Did you eat every night with more people than just your parents? Uh, no, no, no. No, okay. it wasn't like that. But there was, but it was located up there. We lived near that, you know. Did you there have... was a Roshi, a teacher up there. and But you had, like... You know, it was Buddhism. It was Zen Buddhism. It was but not, you had like, your own home. Weird, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. We lived up there. We lived up near the village. In and Mount what Baldy. would he? What were your parents living off of? Mm. That's a good question. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, because my mom was a housewife at that time. Well, my stepdad was a therapist. He was a marriage counselor as well, so he practiced therapy. Now, did he wear like the orange outfits, or that's no, no, no. That's 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 oh. that's our <laughs> no. That's this is Zen Buddhism, which is a black robe. Okay, but would yeah. you wear a black robe every day? No, I wouldn't. No, I don't. Not no. you. Did he? No, only when he was up there meditating. When he's meditating. Okay, and um, uh, amongst other monks, you know, they would have like uh, sessions, as they call them, or um, you know, where you go meditate for hours and just walk around and stuff. It's pretty intense. It's and you went to a normal school? Yeah, there was a school up there, Mount Holly School, as well. So just a normal. It's an interesting school. childhood. It was not normal. And so. Wait, do we, would you see your dad every other weekend? Did you have a traditional right, visitation? Right, exactly. I, my mom, my mom would drive me back to my dad's on the weekends in Sherman Oaks. And did he? So you were their only child together, but did you have right. any siblings on either side, like half siblings? I did later uh, uh-huh. when I moved up to Seattle with my mom and stepdad. I moved up there. Now, why did Dad want to leave the Mount Baldy Zen life because for Seattle? Of asthma and other reasons i think it was also it was beautiful up in seattle uh-huh. and they just wanted to move it was just like la is just not the place for what they wanted you know? so how old are you when you moved to seattle um about 12 i think and, and it was good timing because that's like when we were um mount bali's like north of uh, upland and claremont where like gangs were starting actually back then like the, the crips and the bloods and that was actually starting and i was in a very big school down there only for a couple months Mm -hmm. um and literally there were like stabbing starting and you know a lot of bad stuff in the school it was like a school of like thousands of people and uh, and i think they didn't want me to continue in that atmosphere as well so they're looking out for me as much as i didn't didn't think that you would do that well in the crypt with the crypts the the crypts yeah they thought i don't know why I, i always wanted to be a gang leader and strangely maybe it's the buddhism stuff like we don't really now did you study buddhism do you um i practiced buddhism i would say okay but not as much as i i did later because you know at that age you don't really need to you're not really stressed out and you're not really bogged down by the today's things or whatever you worry about all the petty crap and need uh need that peaceful understanding and 
you know, metaphysical side of ourselves that we have to dig into. We don't do that until later because, you know, that's when we need it mostly. It's, it's hard for like a you know, 12 year old to be stressed out about life. Yeah. Like, oh my God. So, you're, so your dad was a groundling and he was a, mm -hmm. was he always a working actor throughout your childhood? Yes, he was, um, he was a character actor. He did move, uh, shows like, you know, Different Strokes and Facts of Life and... Um, Financially, did he do okay with that? Yeah, he did. Okay. Yeah, uh, he did. He did a lot of... He was a Smurf, too. Oh, okay, he did Smurf voices, voices and yeah. stuff. Yeah, well, I didn't um, think he was... <laughs> what? Well, I didn't think he was dressing up in the blue outfit. Well, he may have been. Some people him. were crazy. Maybe he dressed yeah. up as a Smurf and <laughs> take it seriously. I don't know. But he didn't do that. Uh -huh. But that was pretty cool, too. There's a lot of things... Uh, hanging out with my dad that really influenced me you know the smurf sessions you know like paul winchell was there and john jonathan winters oh he'd like bring you to this the to the recording sessions studio. Yeah. Oh, okay yeah. cool yeah that was really cool but being around the grounding atmosphere at that age was really fantastic and I mean, did your dad discover that you were like funny and, and encourage it and see it yeah. as you're growing up he, he would uh, encourage me you know watching old film classics you know like marx brothers and chaplin and buster keaton and you know yeah yeah and uh you know, I really loved that stuff. I mean, I loved uh, modern, com what was going on in comedy. Right. You know, back then too, like like Eddie Murphy. And right, but you kind of studied it in a way too. It sounds yeah, like. but I, I loved, I loved, uh, I loved the roots of comedy. You know, where it started. And, right. You know, I was a big fan of uh, that. Were you? Well, how about you? Were you? Uh, what was your when you were a kid? My thing was we watched a lot of TV. Yeah. We, I was the youngest of five. There was no rules about how much TV I could watch. Yeah, I was because strict. Because my uh, parents were working, so they kind of they were never like enough with the TV. Okay. Um, except after school, like as I got older, then if they weren't home, I was like great, and right. then like the minute they come home and turn it off because I was supposed to be doing homework. But like. My, I didn't go to summer camps or stuff, so like I'd watch like reruns of like One Day at a Time. Oh yeah, ah, and ah, ah, ah. and the go the Alice or whatever is Mel Alice Steiner. Apart. Yeah, turn it around. Yeah, all the I love. <laughs> I, I really kiss my grits. Yes, I kind of liked sitcoms, <laughs> and I I actually wrote a paper in college about yeah. the difference between '70s sitcoms and '80s sitcoms. That the '70s sitcoms there were so many sad in serious moments yeah, there were in the 70s yeah. and then in the 80s there weren't it was just all like kind of funny because we and... brought everybody down everybody yeah. was brought down the 70s yeah. so they had to be picked up in the 80s again yeah so I kind of was like really kind of fascinated by it and right. I remember when I was um, working with uh, the Waynes brothers on movies and stuff we would always procrastinate and like talk about other things and they were getting into good times and I was like oh I love good times I yeah. watch good times and they're looking at me like this little white girl they're like you did Right. And I was like, yeah, they're like, what did you think of it? And I go, it just, it seems so much fun that everyone lived so close to each other. <laughs> like to me, I was like, oh, I didn't under, I didn't right. understand that it was the projects. I just thought yeah. they lived in this big apartment building in the city. I never thought about and that. And everyone was close Friends by. Friends the doorman. Yeah. Like, yeah. I just kind of like, so it's like, it's kind of interesting when you see like a different yeah. perspective of growing up, you know, and, um. I didn't really think they, were they in the projects? I they were in the know. projects. I didn't even think about it. And it shows you how much fun you can have in the projects. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's what the show is about. Yeah. they were always having a good time. Right. So, anyway, so those are the kind of things we watch, you know, and mm. I, we would watch stand up on TV too and Star right. Search and oh my God, things like Star. that. Like, so just a lot of Star TV. Yeah. yeah. I would watch old movies. I, I was allowed to watch old movies. You know, or good movies, you know. I was into watching really good movies. I was, like, into the Twilight Zone. I oh, watched, okay. like, every Twilight yeah, Zone. Yeah, I wouldn't watch that until later, but I, I watched, like, That was, old... like, the only black and white like, thing. I that and I Love Lucy were, like, probably the only two black and white type shows I oh, watched. Yeah. yeah. I watched Lucy. I watched a lot of animated films, like Disney. Yeah. Old ones, though. But, um, and... But a lot of, a lot of like, like good movies, like Streetcar Named Desire or Apocalypse Now yeah. and things like that. I was really into making films. I think I wanted to be a director at one point, but that didn't happen. Just because I didn't keep going in that direction. Right. But, um... I feel like, though, that's yeah. always something that could happen. Because yeah, the actors sure. do make directors beca become directors, because that's essentially, that's what it is. Right. It's like the vision of... So you start doing the groundlings, and you're going through that. You're dating your Russian girlfriend. The Russian girlfriend leaves you for your best friend. Right. Well, it didn't leave me. We broke up before that. Sure. Uh -huh. I encouraged and then, her. Yes. I really did. Okay. And, you didn't um, even ask her. <laughs> okay, and so then when does the stuff start happening with, like, now you're in the main company and you know that they're looking for new cast members for SNL and they're coming to Growlings. What were those nights like? Because 
there's a lot of stories I heard being like the generation behind you about right. it. The generation behind me. Well, I'm saying like, like I was in the group behind you, but like okay, a few right, right, years right. behind you. Yeah. So like there was a big influx of you guys getting on SNL that right. was like a, just above us. Right. You know, like you, Anna. Well, you came. You went first, I was before but right. Anna you, and you and Will, and Louis then Sherry. Yeah, and then and Sherry, and then the next group was like Anna went on, and right. then. So there was like a lot of people that were, were currently you, in the main company that were then on SNL. Were you in that group, the one with Anna, or? I was. Anna was a. Little ahead of you? A little know. ahead of me, or she graduated to the main company quicker. I can't remember which. Mm. We had one session together, and I remember we were supposed to write a sketch together, and I was so excited. <laughs> we were on Sunday, and I called her that day to confirm, and she goes, you know, I have so much, so many other, I have, she, she, this is what she said, she goes, I feel like I have enough women-driven um, sketches happening right now. So I'm going to write with some of the guys. Oh, she did? Yeah. That's Which I She'd probably be... I never really... And I'm not saying she's not a feminist, but I do remember that. Like, <laughs> at that time, you know, yeah. it was a, it was like there was always less girls, and you wanted to, like, be featured as much as you could. So you right. really had to be strategic about it. Yeah. And for me, I love doing the monologues, because I... Probably you why. love monologues, yeah. Well, I love sketches because, over monologues. Well, be, I like the monologues just because just the same reason I do this podcast alone and do stand up alone. Right. It's like I don't have to depend on someone flaking. Yeah, yeah. You know, like I don't. Ha I didn't have to drive all the way to Los Feliz. Right. To That's meet someone and then you know try. I could go. Okay, I'll just do my aunt at a wedding. Yeah. And fucking kill it, and right. then but then I wouldn't be <laughs> like casted as many things. But right. for me, it was like, and then I also thought, well, this will be easy because at the end, then I could have a, an easier. Everyone was doing one, one one person shows after their career at the Growlings ended or whatever right. it was, and I was like, oh, I'll have all these monologues. This will be easy to put together. Right. So I just kind of, but I liked doing the sketches too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah but I, I liked I, the I, control I liked, of doing the thing myself. I think I liked growing up as like a only child. I. I preferred doing sketch maybe that's the reason I don't know but I prefer right doing... maybe that's interesting I, yeah. like I love writing with Coolidge like she was amazing to write with and yes and well we wrote a lot of stuff together Jennifer Coolidge yeah, yeah. And, and Farrell we wrote a lot you know I just enjoyed now where did you when you met with someone did you meet alone. Will Farrell like were you, did you go through the whole program together did you meet we one met, of the levels I think uh, well we were like oh, I don't I know we we're in all of the Sunday company together I don't know if we were in I don't know if we were in And that together. is where you guys created the Roxbury. Sketch. Yeah, the Roxbury guys. And how did you come up with that idea? Uh, um, well, Will and I were at a bar. You know, we hung out, hung out a lot, and we saw a guy just at the bar alone, <laughs> and uh, just the back of him. We saw the back of him, and he was ordering a drink, and some techno song was on, and he just kind of turned around towards the dance floor and kind of bopping his head a little bit. Not as extreme as we did. Right. Um, and he was, like, looking for someone to dance, and he was mimicking, you know, his hand was kind of saying, if his hand could talk, it was like, you want to dance? You do? You don't? You don't? You do? You do? You don't? You don't? Okay, never mind. Because nobody <laughs> wanted to dance with him at all. <laughs> but he was so excited about it. Yeah. And they turned back around to the bar and get another drink and then do the same thing. He just right. did that for, like, an hour. Nobody ever wanted to dance with the poor guy. So you... But he was so excited about finding it, wanting to dance with someone. And the Roxbury was, so was, like, the, the place... It was, it, it was It was actually, when we came up with it, it wasn't there anymore, actually. It was still... But we did have to meet with the owner of the place, uh, Ely Samaha or something. I think that was his name. For when? For the movie? Or yeah, for yeah, yeah. Oh. So we could use the but name. But first you did it on this, the little tiny 99-person theater Groundlings, right? Yes, yes, yes. First that. And so in in doing that one, was that one of the ones that you featured when the um, casting people for SNL came? Or was, there, was that something you guys that, heard later when you were already working We didn't working know what together? the feature... During that, I don't know because when I came there, I was out of town the night that Lorne Michaels came. Did you want to kill yourself? I talked about and baby, don't hurt me. Did you want to kill yourself? I was pretty upset. <laughs> I was bummed out. Nobody told me that that he was coming too. That's what really bummed me out. Well, that's isn't that the that, truth? Because that's the way it goes. Because it's like that. <laughs> I wish I heard that from you there and then back then. Well, I, I, I was very naive about people wanting to help each other. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I assume that's something that happens. <laughs> what? You know, <laughs> it was, you know, and and but now people do help each other. But I think yes, at that time maybe we don't know. Very, how to. Let me just the, the climate I saw was that. Oh, it back was, to the, the weather. It yes, back to the no, weather. no, the climate of this comedy <laughs> is, you know, that was the ultimate goal. Right. And, you know, there's only so many spots. Right. But what is 
interesting is that, especially even back then, now I under, now I believe there's definitely like, hey, we have to have so many women, we have to have so many uh, people of diversity. And so right. if there's yeah. two, I could see if there were two really specific, you know, types, maybe you'd be like, no, but back then it just seemed like whoever was funny was funny. And, right, right. And... Um, but the way the show would work is, okay, so some, Lauren Michaels is coming. Mm -hmm. Now the director decides what sketches right. is going to be that, on that That night. did happen. So you have to beg the director sure. to say, please, can I bring back this killer bit I did right. a month ago that's not curling the show so that he can see it because it's the funniest character I do. And so now I can imagine how hard it would be the director to go, oh my God, this is all, we have to feature all these things. And I remember when I was doing it, um, it was annoying because the director was dating one of the cast members, our director. Oh, and see, that's what it was like. Weird. Anytime, even like a potential agent would come, we'd have to readjust the show to a, a, to feature this guy's bits. Right. And I was like, okay, that's come on cool, yeah. already. Like, I get Lauren Michaels, yeah. but like, not like freaking paradigm agent. Like, come on already. <laughs> you know? Paradigm agent. You know, like, come on. Right. So, um, but yeah, so I would think that it was very, and I could, and what also happens is. There was an age thing, and you right. kind of had to get on SNL by a certain age. Right. And, you know, because they want you for, like, seven to ten years. They don't want to pick someone who's 55. Right. So I think some of the people that were getting a little older were even more like, this is my last chance. Right, right, you right. have your whole life, you know. <laughs> right, right. So then no one bothers to call you and say, hey, maybe this isn't the night to skip. Right, right, right. <laughs> yeah, well, that's right. I guess that was the sense. But I didn't feel, I felt a little bit like, I don't know. Sher I found out because Sherry called me like the night before saying Lauren's coming. Or maybe it was the, the day of. She said that Lauren's coming. Do you mind if I do a sketch that I do with you usually that we wrote with somebody else? I was like, what? Uh, Where what? were you? I was in Boston with Coolidge actually visiting her grandpa. <laughs> or, I'm sorry, her father. Um, yeah, so it was really kind of like... With Jennifer Coolidge. So then what did you do? Then I tried to get a flight back that same day, but it was impossible. I wouldn't make it in time. And what was she, what was her thoughts about it? Was she just well, she, felt terrible for you? Well, she of. did, but also Jennifer also auditioned for SNL too, so she yeah. had her thing, and I felt bad about that too. That she had an audition and not yeah, been chosen. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. And, but she could have been chosen. Who knows if she was there that night? I don't know. Right. You know, we both kind of got. Untold. Okay, so he comes. Yeah. Wait, I gotta go to the bathroom. Can I go to the bathroom? Yes, we could pause. Is that possible? Yes, of course. I'm sorry to do that. Um, okay, so you can't get the flight. Enough to make the time. Right, we can't make the... I guess there's no... You're not going to make it back in time to LA. So you have to tell Sherry, yes, of course you can do I, the bit that I we did together. I did. I think How I did. How could you not? Yeah, I think I did. It was just... That was the way I found out, and it was very frustrating. <laughs> so I was like, okay, I just hope that he won't... Or Lauren won't... Um, will remember me for my past audition, even though he's coming to see us perform at the Groundlings. Yes. And he didn't... So he ended up choosing Will and Sherry and uh, not me. And did Will and Sherry do a lot of bits together that Coolidge. night? So they could uh, see the chemistry? I think they did a couple things, yeah. 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 And so the world, I remember, right. like, the growling goes crazy. Oh, my God, Will and Sherry are going to be at SNL. I remember, like, everybody, like, really being excited and happy. Right, right, right. How was that for you? <laughs> it was, uh... <laughs> well, I describe it in the book. Um, yeah. Well, I, it was uh, hard at first. You know, I mean, that's what happened, you know? yeah. Um, but later it was okay because Will called me a few months later and said, do you want to join the cast? Uh, Lauren asked me to ask you if you wanted to be in the cast of SL. Oh, you didn't even have to try out again? No, I didn't. No. Because you had, you ever had a formal tryout? I already you, did, yeah. So I you had formally, a formal tryout where you went out to New York? Yes, I did. And did a bunch of characters? Yeah, I did the whole, you know, meeting with Lauren and then another audition, you know, an audition, right. an actual audition where you do characters. And uh, so I did that. When when Will did and Sherry did as well. Yeah. Oh, okay. In Coolidge. So that's what. Um, she already did that. So I was just hoping that's what Lauren would remember. But. So do you remember where you were when you got that call? Which which one? The one from Will. From Will, like where you're like, yeah. oh my god. This and is my exciting. agent, uh, Mike Eisenstadt, at the time too. But he. Yeah. But he's the one who technically told me. But Will told me, you know, formidably, formally, and uh, yeah, I thought that was I was really excited. Although I was a little bit. Um, it wasn't as exciting. Because I yeah. got so let down at first, you know? Right. And um, Was it hard for you to, like, watch them 
what has the show had the show been airing with them and would it be almost hard for you to watch uh, it at first it was and then i then i then i moved on you know i was yeah. still performing at the groundlings my characters got better actually because i don't think i was because i didn't get what i wanted you know i didn't right. get the big goal and uh, i think in that way it made me grow better grow mm -hmm. as a, a writer and grow as a performer for sure right and that helped me actually and so when i got the show you know six weeks prior to the end of the season the first season that will and sherry were on um you know i was i was pretty ready i was prepared you know and yeah the, the first sketch that i introduced was this gibberish guy this sewell forester substitute teacher character that oh, was right. like so, good afternoon i'm so Marta. i'm gonna be your substitute and uh lauren really liked that character and uh, and then he he had it go on the first uh, the first episode. So it was the first catch of the night in the first episode uh, that I started. So yeah. So he was in full support. So that was That's nice. Great. So I didn't really have to work too hard trying to prove myself when I was on the show. Oh, I have so a juicy question nice for you that could I don't know if you can answer or not. But you know, so many people in the sketch group, the Groundlings, would write something to somebody. Yeah. And then that person would get on to SNL, and the person that they wrote the great bit with. Did not. Right. But then they'd be there and they'd be like, God, this is such a great bit. It'd be so great to now do it with somebody else. Right. Well, how do I do this? And I know in one instance with the girl that did not make the SNL, it was like a big issue, like a lawsuit kind of what? issue. Is this some real deal? This like, is real. Is, do I know this? And you're trying to remind no, me? I don't, oh, no, I mean, I'll tell you, it was, it was Anna Gasteyer oh. who had the PBS... Oh. Like weird cooking show, or the oh. weird, or the public radio cooking show. Oh, the NPR. The NPR cooking right. show. Yes, and she had done that with this other girl. Oh, I didn't know that. With At the, the groundlings. Yes, that was in my like within oh, my group. Shit. And oh, she shoot. goes on to SNL, and there was a lot of controversy. Like, she did say that she was going to call her. Like, she did supposedly she called her, and it was okay. But, or they gave her like a little bit of money, like, oh, here, here's, you know, some it's small amount of money. Private, but know. then there were like coffee cups that oh. were made with their sayings, like whatever their saying was. Yeah, it was uh, something uh, like, ooh, that's great. Sweaty balls or whatever. Yeah, whatever was great. And then that, the rumors I got, and this is all rumors that allegedly is like then the girl that did not go on SNL was like, what the fuck? You yeah, know, right, like, right. where does this go from here? Right. And so then. I heard after that there was kind of like a written rule or unwritten rule like you're not you can't bring stuff that you co-wrote mm -hmm. from Second City or for something else here because right. we we can't protect that right and like it's got to be originally here right was that anything I that don't remember that yeah that's so weird I, I was there when that happened then because the Another the reason why I like to work by myself. Right. Like you never want to like uh, screw someone over but God you hear of this great you know bit yeah and, yeah. Well, the only thing I collaborated on that got attention was... Oh, it happened again. Wait. With another Anna Gasteyer bit. Oh, what? But I'm not ripping on Anna yeah, Gasteyer. No, she's a great girl. But, um, and I think my other friend didn't care as much. Uh-huh. I was, saw the bigger picture and was like, I'd rather not make an enemy in this business. Go ahead. Right. Maybe you'll remember when the time counts. But... The one where she and Will were like middle school singing teachers. Oh yeah, of course. Yeah, Bobby that Marty. that was Anna and Robin, my oh, friend Robin shit. McDonald, that wrote that and oh, put that on God. at the Groundlings. I remember Robin. And I feel that in that case, she was given the heads up, and she was like, like I said, she was I think just like, hey, there's no way to fight this. Right. Do your thing. Well, that's and hopefully very nice you remember that I'm cool and mature about it. Right. You know, and good luck to that. your life. But yeah, so ah, kind of juicy. That is juicy. I wouldn't. Uh, usually, people can't get away with that. Although, you know, I heard stuff about, you know, Mike Myers on Wayne's World. You know, stuff in Second City. Yes. And uh, was it Sprockets or Simon? I don't know. Well, in Jay characters. Moore's book, he actually tells a story about who. About how he was panicked um, to pitch something. Right. And he kind of took a bit from like either a stand up or something. Right. And everyone loved it. Now it's getting on. Yeah, yeah. And he's yeah. like, holy shit, you know, I really, I'm a little, you know, a little bit plagiarized or cheated or whatever you want to call it. Right. And, um, and you know, he, he talks about his book that it was like, you know, a low point. He regrets it. Right. 
the of course SNL put SNL in jeopardy that you're doing that you know mm -hmm. and um but it happens all the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it happens all the time in writers' rooms and things. It you know? does, but it's so not. I'm but, so afraid to ever do something like that. Right. Because it's not gonna. It's there's nothing good about. Well, it. Well, I think if if a writer sees something out there and they're writing on a sitcom. Yeah. And they have no yeah. connection to the person, but they may have seen something on YouTube or on a stand-up special, and they kind of take that germ of an idea and they make it something. I think it's a pretty hard thing to connect the dots and accuse someone of it, and it's, no one's going to sue you for it. But like it, writing the actual bit with someone else that was on stage for six months, right? That's better be different... full disclosure there. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. Know, no, like, I agree. Yeah, the, yeah. yeah, definitely. But if there's something, in, yeah, it's hard to uh, point the dots if it's not. A so, full so then you're idea. having you're having a great time. You guys are having like a, this was a really golden time of SNL with all of you, and it really made me proud to be part of the growling. So I'm like now I think. I think they start, you know, I'm like, they recognize that, like, by people having a history together and getting and continuing that chemistry is yeah. so great, which is why I think, like, the movie Bridesmaid was like no other. Right. Because right, they right. actually were like, we're not going to cast Gwyneth and, right, and right. Cameron Diaz and, you know, and uh, Kate Hudson to be three hilarious bridesmaids. We're right. actually going to be people yeah. that all work together, that are all funny, and people always go, why was that movie? No movie's been like that. I'm like, because. Yeah. They the cast. industry gets new to it, and they start picking these people that they think, you well, know. Well, they, they chose people that are, uh, that they knew, they already worked, they already knew yeah. that there would be chemistry, you know. Right. I mean, of course, there'd be chemistry with someone like with and Cameron Diaz. I mean, that would be. No, there wouldn't, not chemistry like the be, bridesmaid chemistry. No, no, no. Not, not, but, not quite like not that. Not the comedic, like raw, no, hardcore like, comedy, where like all those girls were successful, but they all pretty much had yeah, paid no, their no, dues. Yeah, no, no, I'm not disagreeing that's with I'm, you. I'm no, but saying, that's what like, I'm yeah, saying that sure. makes that's, it so that's cool. That's what makes it so good, too. Yeah. You know, it's like, you know, uh, chemistry is the best thing, I think, when it comes to in comedy. You know, if you got yeah. two or three people that work together already, and that's the best, you know. Get their chemistry vibe, Chemistry is yeah. incredible. You know, that's so, the funnest thing to watch, partnership, like Spade and Farley, and, you know. Yeah. You know, so the how did stuff. then the movie option come for you guys, you and Will, to do Roxbury? Oh, uh, uh, well, Amy Herkeling called uh, Lauren, I guess, or Paramount called Lauren and said uh, they were interested in doing a Roxbury movie. Mm -hmm. You know, and the first thought I had was, like, what about a cheerleaders? I thought, you know, maybe that would be more appropriate. <laughs> That's what I, But I didn't... Well, why? <laughs> because that was... Why was are you just... giving away something that you're not part of? Because <laughs> that's the way I thought. I thought, like, just being a viewer, I thought, like... You'd rather see the thought... cheerleaders than the Roxbury guys. <laughs> <laughs> but not like... I, of course I want to do it, you know, but I was yeah. being kind of fair in the world, the world, the general world of, like, you know... Yeah. It was more known. The cheerleaders were more, you know, known than it was. Yeah. You know, at the time, so... I'm surprised it was... That was the first one to be asked. Yeah. Uh, that's all. Because we didn't talk. You know, we learned how to, later our characters spoke, you know, right. and it turned out fine. But Amy Heckley was like, you know, the shit. So we were like, yeah, that'd be great. So then you guys had to write, like, the whole backstory of having the dad yeah. and the flower. And, and that then, was like, like Lor Lauren and Amy did a lot of that, too. I mean, uh -huh. we, we did with Steve Korn, Will and I, but, you know, a lot of that was them. They, they wanted to, they couldn't decide whether it was West Coast or East Coast, you know, Bridge and, Bridge and Tunnel movie or Beverly Hills, you know. Right. So that was what they were deciding, both Lauren and Amy. I think it was just they were deciding which, which could be closer to them where they lived. I think that's all they were trying to figure out, like how close could, could we shoot the film to my house. To make think, it convenient. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, exactly. And then after that, then you did the Mango movie, right? No, I never did the Mango movie. What, 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 what else did you do? <laughs> Mango was like the stripper, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I did a, a movie called Corgi Romano for Disney. Yes. That but that, silly. but that wasn't a character in SNL. That mm -hmm. was just a fresh movie. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. That was just a fresh movie. Yeah. Yeah, and then a few others, Undercover Brother, and you know, a bunch of movies. But yeah, no, that was the only SNL movie that I. So did. how many years were you there for? Almost eight years on SNL. And then what made what ended it? What made you go? Um, well, my dad was sick, and um, you know, he was on his last legs, and I. Uh, I don't know. I just think I ran out of characters. I think you know. It ran its course. You yeah, think? I think. So. Yeah, I think so. I ran my course. I wasn't asked to leave or anything like that. Right, you know, right. They, they asked me to stay, but I was like at that point where I didn't know, because having characters on that were reoccurring is, is feels like safety. You know, yes. you have these characters, you can go back next season, 
and explore more about the characters. Right, and then the guest, the guest render. comes and they're like, I want to be in the substitute teacher yeah, sketch, like, or I, I want to be in the Roxbury sketch. I didn't want to do Mr. Peepers for like a 15th time. <laughs> Mr. Thought, Peepers was the... The writers were like, it's getting old, and you kind of felt like it was getting old, you know. That was the monkey, right? Yeah, but then, it, it, you just felt like you wanted to re... I do remember Evaluate. being at the Growlings when I saw right. the Mr. Peepers. Right, right, right. And the way, so you were this monkey that would like sure. take this apple uh -huh. and eat it. Like, how did you get that idea? That was like, I remember thinking, this is so genius. How did he get that idea? Was he one day at the zoo and saw a monkey and was like, I can <laughs> do <zoo>. that? <laughs> like, what was it? Uh, well, that eating part, I, I uh, came up with that character with uh, Roy Jenkins. You know Roy yes, Jenkins. Yes, yeah. And uh, it was based on a bad improv, uh, and Melanie Graham was the teacher, and she said, all right, everybody, let's do the worst improv you can. And I jumped out of the, uh, I, I ran out the front, uh, ran out one of the doors on stage and jumped, leaped up on Roy. Because he's really tall. He's like 6'5 or something, yeah. I don't know. And I hung, I was kind of a bit of an acrobat or whatever, I was, whatever, yeah. I worked out, I don't know. So I, so I uh, jumped on him and I hung upside down by my legs around his neck. Uh -huh. I was swinging, and he, uh, we thought that was pretty interesting. <laughs> that's an interesting choice to do. And he was like, that's like one of those animals that are brought, brought on, like Jack Hannum, you know, when yeah. he goes on Animals at Tonight Show. Yes. So uh, we did that. We parodied a Tonight Show, and Will was the uh, the talk show host. So that's where it came from. The, the, the apple was just like a bit, like if it's going to be like an animal. It was a missing link. Yeah. So we're like, what do we do? Uh, you know, I thought like, well, I saw a thing in... Um, cartoon called Mickey's trailer with Mickey Mouse and Donald Duck yeah <laughs> and Goofy and there was a point where Goofy had some eating corn like yeah. corn, 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 corn on the cob yeah and he ate it like a typewriter yes I don't know if you remember yes, that yes yes so I, I, like it, yeah. I thought in my head like if I ate an apple like a typewriter yes <laughs> so that was my goal so you know you think of something and you try to do it and it comes out that way it wasn't really like and you wonder like oh my exactly. god who would have thought that this like little yeah. thing became such a popular sure i guess so yeah i don't know if a lot yeah. of people were doing it but do you think it influenced a lot of people to eat the apple that way no but i mean <laughs> but then you know and then to go okay i'm gonna get the ear thing you got like the right monkey the ear. ears and stuff like that yeah like, and then the rock did it and people and pe love the rock doing it and, you know. yeah and like what's what's cool is what people don't realize like it's like you know we yeah, in this troupe you you do everything you costume it right. you had to go buy the ears you had to, that's you know, right, that's like, right, yeah. all and those things. Like, there isn't, there isn't somebody that's like, hey, you no. know what you should do? It's like, no, you write it, you produce it, you dress yourself, you do your own makeup. Right. You bring your props. Yeah. Besides a black box is the only thing that it can offer you. Like, if you yeah. need to bring a glass bowl, you have to bring that glass bowl. Like, it's yeah, a huge you, you did your own pain costume. in the ass that's right. when I think about how much You had a locker, it was. you got your own locker with the growlings. Is that what you're talking about? I don't think maybe you, lockers? you must have been a main. You'd have to be a oh, main yeah. member. Oh, you a main member? No. Oh, okay. No, thanks Never for bringing I'm that sorry. up. <laughs> I didn't bring it up. I'm just kidding. No, but I did. Well, when you're a main member, you get a locker. It's not that exciting. You just get a place no, to you hold can your. Keep your. No, I had to haul that shit yeah. back and forth. I mean, my whole Toyota Celica was just like wigs and shit in the trunk. Like, right, right, right. Like, that yeah, care. I still, I'm but still it's so doing, I'm still doing I mean, that today when I do my shows. We're I'm young. still oh, really? bringing a bunch of shit. Um, at my live shows, I do some. At my live juicy scoop shows, I do characters. Right, when right, I'm just right. doing stand up, but now I'm doing these combo shows where I might come out as a character and then I'll do like some stand up and then I'll end with yeah. like characters. Right. But um, yeah, but like I've you know you bring I'm like used to it. I'm like okay, I've done all this, so it's yeah, like yeah, easy yeah. to do. Yeah. Well, that's interesting. Yeah. That yeah. Was, that, that was. I mean, we were young. It was very exciting, and you had a goal in mind. You know, right? And you were really close to it. And yeah. so, okay, so now, now you're out. You've got your book, not out of the closet. I mean, like you're out. <laughs> you have your book. Yes. Oh, you mean now, right? Now in your That's life. What you yes. What, now in my what's life. going? Tell us. Now I'm like, doing where, a lot of stand up and right. I have a show where can coming they up. See you? I can't talk about the show. Oh, you have a TV show coming out? Yeah, but it's not going to probably be on until next year because okay. it's developing so slowly. But that's okay. That's that's. That's great, though. That should be done. Are you yeah. excited? Yeah, I am very much so. Okay. Uh, and um, of course, you can. I'm doing stand up all over the place, you know. You Where can, can they find your dates and follow you and Chris, all that? Chris Catan Official. That's my Instagram. Okay. Or, or Twitter is at Chris Catan. I'm not as active as I should be, but you can find my. But when well, you can find the dates, yeah. check out the book, you guys. Yeah, get Chris the Catan book. Official. Babies don't. Baby don't, baby don't hurt me. A singular. Baby don't hurt They're me. Like Just babies. like the song. Baby that would don't be about birthing. Like, my children don't hurt me. Babies don't hurt me. That's what it would be. Like. 
yeah. children don't hurt me. And you wrote the book. That's another book. Because some you... people believe their children hurt them. <laughs> Here's a book I wrote about children hurting me. Babies don't hurt me. Do you, um, what made you write the book? Did someone approach you or you said, I'm ready to I, write a lot a book. of people say you should write a book because they knew me as a person and yeah. my stories and stuff. And, you know, I, um, I remember a lot of stuff. I think a lot of people in that cast, I'm sure they remember that stuff, but they just didn't write about some of the stories, you know. The juicy stuff. Yeah, it's not that juicy. It's, it's like, well, that's but, not going to sell the but, book. But, but, well, yes, it's juicy. It's, it's not like juicy as in I called out anybody. Yeah. There's no calling out anyone. Right. That's not cool. Like throwing in the, I don't throw anybody under the bus. Or yeah. Anything. You know, but.